Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of the Basic Beginners Free CAD for version 1. In this lesson we'll learn about the tools for leveraging symmetry, the types of symmetry and the advantages and disadvantages of using them in your models. We already covered the mirror pattern tool but it's worth delving deeper into how different types of symmetry are used in CAD and why they can be so beneficial. We're all familiar with symmetry. When something is symmetrical one half of the shape reflects across a line or axis, allowing it to match the other half. This can be done for a center line placed horizontal, vertical, or at any angle between. This kind of symmetry is known as line symmetry. Line symmetry means an object can be mapped onto itself using a reflection line. This is what the basic mirror tool achieves. When you move the center line to the side of the subject, you get a full mirror copy. If the mirror line is placed directly next to the object, the reflected copy will touch the feature or body, making a solid body. In part design, this relates to selecting an edge as a reference or using a reference such as a plane to offset over a gap. So far, we've only demonstrated mirroring over a single plane, but we can also mirror across multiple planes. This is where you'll continue to use your standard mirror tool, but with even greater impact. There are multiple types of symmetry. Let's take a look at rotational also known as axial symmetry. This is when an object maps onto itself by rotating around a center point by an angle less than 360 degrees. Each repeated segment maps onto the next. This is where you use the polar pattern tool, with the angle of rotation being your angular offset. Of course, there are practical limits. For example, you could apply a 10 degree polar pattern to a circular plate, but it may not be useful unless there's a repeating feature like holes or notches within that angle. In that case, the pattern becomes meaningful. We also have point symmetry. Point symmetry or central symmetry occurs when the shape looks the same after being rotated 180 degrees. It looks the same upside down. In CAD, this is where you use a polar pattern with an angle offset of 180 degrees and two occurrences. This allows the shape to map onto itself across the center point rather than a line. So why do we use symmetry in CAD design? What are the actual advantages and disadvantages? So our advantages are it's easier to update. If you change one side, for example, adjusting the size or position of a hole, the mirrored side will update automatically. This saves time and decreases the risk of errors. Though equal constraints can be used for simple shapes, Symmetry becomes especially useful for more complex geometry, since you only need to sketch once. Symmetry also saves time. You only need to design half the part, then mirror or pattern it, which can cut down your amount of work. You can also keep constraints minimal during early stages of the design, allowing you to work more freely. And then we don't have to worry about the reflected side when constraining, because it will automatically update. Here I'm sketching a stylized piece using minimum constraints. Symmetry is making this process faster and more flexible. I don't need to match the exact geometry, so I can experiment freely with the design. Later on, I might use point symmetry via polar pattern or reflect across a different plane using a mirror to explore different shapes. Manual duplication often leads to small errors. The symmetry ensures that both sides are identical. We can just think of the issues that could arise if parts you sketch weren't fully constrained. You would have to make the same adjustment on the other side if it wasn't symmetrical. There are some disadvantages. It can be tricky for beginners. If you're new to CAD, setting up the mirror planes or constraints might be difficult. So let's say if we wanted to mirror and a hole is along the center line. Because the center line is set in the hole, we have to sketch half a circle. So instead of circles, we need to use arcs. Arcs are harder to constrain because they have a start point, an end point, and a center point, along with a radius where circles only need a center point and a radius. Another disadvantage is it's difficult to make asymmetrical changes later. If your design requires changes and you need different features on each side, symmetry becomes a bit more limited. You have to break the mirror, either removing it or add additional features, which can lead to more complicated and less elegant models. My design has become a bit more complicated. I need to change the circles at either ends to be different sizes. So I need to revise that symmetry and create a new sketch with a separate feature. This breaks the flow and requires extra fillets to blend smoothly. With a single sketch, I can control the arcs directly and ensure tangency. 
It can also be confusing, not just for others, but yourself in the future. When someone else looks at your model, or a few months up the line you come back, it might not be immediately clear that a mirror pattern was used. This can lead to confusion about which side is the original and which side is the mirror. You also have to be mindful of the continuity across the mirror when dealing with one side. If we're mirroring, it's quite easy to create a pinch point where the two surfaces connect and don't flow together. So we have to create tangency across those surfaces. We can see the hole on the left is not a circle where it should be. This is because the center point of the arc is not tangent across the mirror plane. Simply adding a coincident constraint to the axis solves this problem. We see this often when mirroring lofts. The continuity breaks down between those two surfaces and we get that pinching effect by making the sketches that define that surface tangent with a reflection line allows for the resulting surface to have continuity across the origin and the mirror. So I hope that's given you an introduction of where to use symmetry and the benefits. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.